So next I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Nancy Harris. Um, she's research manager at Global Forest Watch, which is an international initiative uh, originated by the World Resources Institute in Washington, DC. Um, Global Forest Watch unites satellite technology, open data, and crowdsourcing to guarantee access to reliable information about the world's forests in near, near real time. So join me in uh, welcoming Dr. Nancy Harris. I'll, I'll let you know if I need you. OK, so I'm just going to highlight uh, for a couple minutes here uh, Global Forest Watch, which is a new online forest monitoring and alert system um, that Rebecca highlighted in her opening presentation yesterday. Um, I should, um, what I'm showing here is the website, but I should mention also that Global Forest Watch is also a really unique partnership that brings together more than 45 partner organizations um, who are all working to uh, do a better job at forest monitoring. Um, some of the partners are actually sitting in this room, Google, Amazon, um, Jane Goodall Institute that you'll hear from uh, later, University of Maryland, Woods Hole, a lot of you are, are here today, so it's great to actually um, see you all here. Um, so what's the challenge that this partnership is trying to address? Um, across the world, forest data continues to be kind of uh, unreliable and out of date. Uh, it tends to be dispersed across many different data sources that may or may not be, may or may not be comparable. Um, it can be difficult or expensive to access. It might just not be presented in ways that people can easily interact with the data or interact with each other around the data. Um, and so that just makes the work of governments harder by impeding law enforcement, uh, public participation, informed policy making. Uh, it can also, in some cases, facilitate corruption. Uh, it also makes the work of companies harder. Who are, it just presents another obstacle to these companies who are trying to monitor their suppliers and um, prove, demonstrate performance against the sustainability commitments that they'd, they've set out to um, achieve. So we at WRI decided that it was time for a new approach. Um, and so, so there's a bunch of cool features on this website that I'm not going to have time to get into. Um, but I'll just jump right into the, the heart of GFW here, which is this interactive global map um, that shows a lot of different things. I'm going to start with um, form alerts. This is where Global Forest Watch really started. We invested in this prototype of um, just a really powerful visualization of forest change over time. FORMA stands for Forest Monitoring for Action. Um, it's an algorithm that analyzes modus imagery along with a, a bunch of other data to identify every 16 days, which we're calling near real, near real time, every 16 days, identify new areas of large scale clearing. Um, and so if you, we press the play button down here, you can kind of see new pixels um, over time changing. Um, and so as we we're developing this prototype, there are a lot of other scientists doing a lot of other cool stuff, such as Carlos at Amazon, uh, Matt Hansen at University of Maryland was collaborating with Google to create the first 30 meter global scale product of um, tree cover change over the past 12 years, 2000 to 2012. Um, and so we started, started to put all these change products together on a map. So we can, here's formal alerts. We have Amazon alerts that Carlos um, has been working on for the Amazon. We have the Hansen loss and gain data over time. And um, we can sh see that. And so this really starts to um, show us what's happening in forests. And we started also adding additional data sets that can put these forest change products more into context. So for example, where are the forests? Where, where is tree cover across the world? Um, where are the concessions? Where are the logging concessions? Where are the mining concessions? Where are the oil palm concessions that we have um, access to, to that data? Where are the protected areas of the world? We can turn on that layer. Um, people submit stories to the Global Forest Watch platform. We can also see where people are, are talking about forests. Um, you can submit a story online, and that would go into the platform. Um, so as we build this, we're starting to address the challenge that I just mentioned, which was we're starting to gather and share information um, on what's happening in forests, um, and hopefully leading to better forest management decisions by, by governments, by companies, by local stakeholders. Um, anybody with an internet connection can you know, pan around the world and 
what I've shown you so far is visualization, right? This is the monitoring and analysis session. So let's, let's talk about the analysis. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, so if we turn on, for example, oil palm in Indonesia, let's see. We can turn on that concession layer and zoom in to an area of interest. Um, and so I can click on an, any oil palm concession in here, get some information about it, um, click this button here that says analyze, and I can see, um, for example, how much loss between 2000 and 2012, according to the Hansen data, occurred in that polygon. I can change the date range and it'll update on the fly. Um, I can change the data set. So if I want to go from Hansen loss to formal alerts, I can see how many formal alerts happened in a, a specific polygon of interest. Um, we want people to visit the DFW platform, but we don't want them to have to come back every month to see what's going on. So there's also th this option that you can subscribe to alerts. So you enter a polygon of interest and you'll get an email if something um, is happening within that. Um, this is for the concession boundaries that we have on our site, but we also have the option to um, draw your own polygon. So if you want to just kind of draw an area on the map, we can also um, get alerts that way. So this is useful for people um, who are trying to monitor protected areas or, or really any area that they're interested in. Um, so as we move forward, we've started to branch out and develop uh, more specific applications that apply the same principle of monitoring and analysis and visualization, but through much more specific lenses of, of specific use cases for priority user groups. So the first two applications that we've launched are GFW commodities. GFW Fires, I'm not going to have time to get into those, but Commodities is a tool designed for companies to be able to track deforestation in their commodity supply chains. And GFW Fires is a tool to allow people to monitor what's going on um, in terms of forest fires and haze in Southeast Asia. And these specific applications have really started to have on the ground impacts. Um, but as we move forward, we realize we're, it's never going to be possible for us to be able to do everything ourselves, right? So we're trying to create this enabling environment um, so that others can use the GFW tools, the API, to de develop custom applications use for their own um, forest monitoring purposes. So just quickly, a couple, Raleigh asked me to kind of outline a couple best practices or lessons learned or advice. Um, so I'm just going to share two. Um, the first one is, is just start simple. Global Forest Watch is pretty big right now, um, and it's getting bigger by the day. But um, its origins, as I mentioned before, are, are really pretty simple. We started with a single data set and visualized it. And we used that to slowly build funding and partnerships. Um, and so once you start growing, you kind of have to think about scaling up not just the technology, but also the team. Um, the team has grown from five to over 50 very quickly. So you have to think about structuring that team in a way that is sustainable under constant growth. Um, so our team is now very, very specialized in core areas of research, monitoring and analysis, mm -hmm. communications, and engineering. Um, the second point is just about website development and data development. Um, they need to be driving the process. Um, I think all of us in this room kind of hope for this, if, if you build it, they will come kind of mentality. And I don't really necessarily think that's the right approach. Um, product development needs to be dri driven by your users, right? And it seems really simple, but in the NGO world, I know a lot of us in this room are in the NGO world, it, that's actually harder, harder to do than it seems, um, where your product is impacted by a lot of other um, things such as you know, grant timelines and funding priorities. And so you, we really just need this constant feedback from users and assessing user needs. That just needs to happen all the time. And that's what needs to drive um, your development because that's what's going to have the impact. So that's it. Yeah, so you mentioned the carbon market specifically. So the first two applications that we have are the fires and the commodities, but we're in the process of building out a GFW climate application that will touch on some of those carbon um, issues. So, you know, looking at GFW and all the data and infrastructure in it through this very specific um, 
carbon or climate lens. So, you know, how does GFW relate to Red Plus? How does GFW relate to generating, you know, these incentives for people to um, use the data on GFW to actually stop it? <laughs>